Hey everyone, this is John with the Active Towns Channel. This is an excerpt from my interview with Leonard Nout uh, from this past January, and we're talking all about Dutch-designed intersections and roundabouts. And I just felt like this would be a really nice little shorty for folks because the uh, question about intersection design and roundabout design keeps coming up. So hopefully this will be helpful. Enjoy. So uh, the other the other fun thing that you sent uh, my way was was a video of uh, a, an intersection. So let's pull pull that up, and we can uh, we'll, we'll just let this play in the background, and you can talk a little bit about mm. what's going on here and, yeah. and and why you thought this would be a, a fun thing to you know sort of have you know as a, a little bit of our backdrop. Yeah, yeah. So it's a bit of a comparison, right? This is a, an intersection in the city of Tilburg in the Netherlands with a, a very comparable comparable scale to the intersection that we saw in Canmore earlier. Mm -hmm. Multiple lanes on the approaches, quite large uh, intersection, long crossing distances. But what you see here is that that design actually corresponds quite nicely with with what we see in Canmore. And I well, I just love drone footage. First of all, I mean, it, I think it looks great. It's very peaceful. I can watch this for hours on on, on a loop. I, I think you <laughs> I think you sent me like an hour and 13 long. Yeah. <laughs> this is only 13 minutes, so that's, you, you don't get the good. full hour. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so it's such a peaceful, uh, peaceful view from the top. It's very, uh, you, and you can really see how it operates. And I think some of the key features that, that make this intersection work so well is so nice to see uh, from a drone footage instead of just satellite imagery, because now you can actually see how people behave, where do people ride, how do people cross, who goes first, etc. Etc. Right, um, and that that makes it uh, one of the videos that we now use in our uh, in our trainings quite a lot because it's right. it, it's just yeah, you just sit there and watch it and be like ah okay so that car goes first and then ah these people yeah. on the bikes that are approaching from the north they wait a little bit in front of the car where you see at the top right um, yeah. so the car can see them all the elements that make a protected intersection so good you can see in, in this one beautiful ballet <laughs> yeah yeah the ballet on there. Well, speaking of, yeah. of ballet, uh, you and I ha had talked a little bit before we pressed record about the fact that uh, I, I'm a huge fan of the Dutch style roundabouts. And, uh, and I know that, that you recently did a webinar about uh, the roundabout designs and things of that nature. While this image is up, um, and, and then I'll, I'll, I'll try to find a different, uh, uh, something else to pull up so that we can, you know, kind of do a compare and contrast. Talk about what this would look like um, in an urban setting if this was a Dutch style roundabout. Mm. Mm. Yeah, quite a bit smaller, actually. A lot of people think that roundabouts are huge. Um, but if you look closely at this, you can see the three approach lanes from from uh, east and west direction, and then three from the north, two from the south, mm -hmm. three from the south as well, I think. So that's actually a lot of space. Um, and if you think about a roundabout, you can turn left, right, or straight from the same lane. Mm -hmm. So all of that extra lane um, space that we have on the approaches here just goes away, which means that you, you really need um, yeah, a lot less space in, a, in an intersection like this if you, if you were to have it as a roundabout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also, yeah. people hate stopping, right? Nobody likes to stop for a traffic light, especially if it's quiet, not a lot of traffic like in this situation. I would just be frustrated because what am I waiting for? There's nobody crossing. There's literally nothing, right, nothing right. dangerous going on. Why don't you just let me go? So you, you by building a roundabout, you, you kind of take that frustration away and you, you just let the, the, the traffic manage itself. There's no regulations or no light that somebody decided that's going to turn red you know i don't have anybody to blame but the rest of the traffic if i have to wait uh, for something and i think that that makes the whole intersection work very differently removes a lot of the frustrations um, and just makes the whole thing more fluid and more yeah like a ballet like you said I think it's, a, it's a really nice um, nice way to talk about a roundabout because it's it's way more about um, contact with each other making eye contact giving way to each other when you can um, and it's yeah, it's just a much more civil way of uh, of operating, less regulatory and more personal. And I think that's a that's a nice bonus of the roundabout. Next yeah. to all of the safety features that we have, I mean, roundabouts are safer, better for everybody. Uh, a Dutch roundabout, <laughs> not an right. American roundabout. Yeah, yeah. No offense. Yeah, <laughs> we're still working on one of those. So this is an example. So this is an overhead here that that we're looking at, um, and to your point, it. it it, they don't take anywhere near as much 
space, real estate, as what North American context of, mm. you know, the modern roundabout where the prioritization is in the fast movement of motor vehicles versus uh, you can actually, you know, fit a, a roundabout, you know, a Dutch styled roundabout where prioritization is, is there for the more vulnerable users into a fairly tight space. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, 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 there's a few things that you need to take into account that I think a lot of people forget. I won't go too much into technical details, but, you know, the size of the island and the, the, the setback of the bike lane, et cetera, et cetera. But especially yeah, in the, in, a, in the North American context, I think a lot of North American roads or arterials are uh, way over-designed for the traffic volumes they, they carry. So a 15,000 vehicle per day road can already have four or sometimes even six lanes at the at the intersection and then you're definitely easily you could easily fit in a, a continental style dutch style roundabout uh, within that same space that's that's not the concern at all at that stage anymore no yeah. for sure yeah yeah it's good stuff i wish more i wish more cities would do it <laughs> yes and uh, they're working on it in 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 a, in a few places uh, the uk has recently uh, built their first uh, European or Dutch style roundabout yes. with bike priority. Yes, yes, um, and it's going well. Uh, it's always a bit scary, right? Because you you, you put bikes, uh, you give uh, bikes give uh, get priority, so cars have to stop for them, and you know there's all all these different things that happen. So it does take a bit of training and a bit of getting used to, but it does work. And even in an in an English or UK context, which is not necessarily the most bicycle friendly context, it, it, it can operate quite well. So it's uh, yeah. It's a bit of bravery, I think, that it takes. Yeah, to build the yeah. First one. yeah. I, I would agree too. And it's it, for me um, that first time of of uh, traveling to the Netherlands and uh, experiencing the Dutch style roundabouts. Um, I went there anticipating it, and so I sought it out. And but it would just it, it you it, you. It's hard to explain just how amazing it is to to experience it and ride it and mm. go oh yeah this is just so intuitive it makes so much sense and yeah. um to your point if a motor vehicle driver is required to to wait ultimately the the, the waiting times are are are, are quite minimal, you know, they, yeah. you know, yeah. it's unless they happen to be in a situation where the, the bike and pedestrian numbers are so extreme it, to which, you know, there would then be a, a huge queuing up of, of motor mm -hmm. vehicles. And maybe that's not the right treatment for that particular area. Um, I don't know, but the, the point, my point is, is that it, it works quite well. And, there's a, a certain amount of uh, forcing people to make eye contact and communicate mm. and, and be able to navigate in that environment. Yeah. And since all the speeds are incredibly slow and low, mm. it, it just, it, it works incredibly well. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, speed, speed is everything, right? And, and I think the way uh, traditionally we design intersections is we don't want to slow down the cars too much. You might put a, a traffic light in, but you still have, if it's green, you can travel through that intersection at full speed. And that's kind of counter productive because the whole purpose of an intersection is to slow down because that's where conflicting movements come together and if they come together you don't want to have them crash at a very high speed because that's dangerous um so so managing the speed and and not being scared of really reducing the speed at the intersection irrespective of whether you put in a roundabout or traffic lights even at a traffic light you should slow the cars down um that's that's i think a very under underutilized tool in the in, in the safety toolbox um and like you said, the, 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 the roundabout works very efficiently. I mean, the, the, the Dutch are nothing if not efficient. We, we don't like waste. Uh, and that's why we consider traffic lights are, are often quite wasteful in terms of capacity or time, right? There's clearance time, you have to accelerate, you have to come to a full stop. All of those things are wasted energy, wasted time or wasted capacity. Right. Um, and with a roundabout, you don't have that because it's a self-managing system. If it's right. quiet, you just flow through at a low speed, but continuous. Um, so there's often much less delay at the roundabout than an intersection if you, if you count up the whole. 
Hey, thank you all so much for watching this excerpt of episode number 104 with Leonard Nout. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. And also a special thank you to all my amazing Active Towns ambassadors who are directly supporting my efforts via Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, the YouTube Super Thanks, uh, and also buying things from the Active Towns store. We've got some great streets for people swag out there. So uh, check it out. <laughs> Again, thank you all so much for watching. And this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. Cheers.